हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू लिटरेचर वॉरियर्स मैनी स्टूडेंट्स हैव रिक्वेस्टेड मी टू एनालाइज द पोएम टू द नाइल सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोन एनालाइज द पोएम टू द नाइल बाय जोन केट्स सो आई फेल लाइक मैनी ऑफ यू हैव प्रॉब्लम्स विद दिस पोएम आई थिंक इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द आर्केक लैंग्वेज द पोएट हैज बीन यूज ओके uh we'll go through the poem so before that let me tell something about the poet john keats so john keats is a nature poet and he has contributed lot to romanticism and uh, he has appreciated nature with all his senses so one of his uh, famous fo- poems was uh, ode to nightingale so there also he has uh, mesmerized with the song of the nightingale and uh, he has enjoyed nature and appreciated it with all his senses so this is also something uh, related to nature and being mesmerizing and uh, telling the holistic power that nature has well so uh, however john keats have been uh, died in 26 that means uh, when he was 26 years old because he has uh, he was suffering from a, a incurable disease and uh, so he's a 19th century poet 19th century poet well so let me uh, tell you something about the significance of the title because uh, title is really important in every poem so to the nile so you have earlier learned the poem to the evening star so it's addressing to the evening star so here also the poet is addressing to the nile nile river well so you know the what nile river is it's one of the most famous rivers in the world well let me go through the stanza so first of all i should say this is a sonnet and it and it's written in petrarchan sonnet form and uh, it is a short lyrical poem and it has 14 lines uh with an octave and a sestet that means uh, first part of the sonnet is with eight lines and the other part is with six lines so i will uh, tell something more about that when i am discussing the poem well so let me start with the first line sun of the old moon mountains african well sun of the old moon mountains african so now you know we are the poet is addressing to the nile river so addressing nile as the sun you can see directly the personification here the technique of personification well and this suggests sun of the old moon mountains so Nile River is the sun of old moon mountains. So you have to remember that it is believed that Nile River has been originated from originated from old moon mountains. Now you know uh, Mahavari River has been originated from Sri Pad or Adams Peak. We believe like that. So the poet says that it is believed that. it is the sun of old moon mountains in africa well so then the second line chief of the pyramid and crocodile so you know when we are talking about pyramids and crocodiles we uh, quickly remind quickly reminds us about egypt egyptians so it suggest well because uh, pyramids belong to egypt 
and Egyptians have built pyramids and it says, the poet says that Nile river is the chief of the pyramids and crocodiles. Uh, we'll analyze that. So, uh, in brief, pyramids have been uh, built by Egypt and it is the tombs of ancient kings and queens of the Egyptians. Kings and queens. Well, so it is believed that now these are you know very huge buildings, huge tombs, the pyramids are and uh, you know these uh, tombs uh, wanted huge blocks to build them. So these blocks have been transported by uh, the barges from the Nile River. So the poet tries to say that without Nile River it was impossible to build the pyramids. So Nile River can be considered as the chief of the pyramids. And when it comes to crocodiles, it is believed that largest speech species, largest species of crocodiles live in Nile. So it is it is just a belief that they believe that the world's largest species of crocodiles uh, live in Nile River. So being that with uh, with the significance of that chief of the crocodiles is also the nile river so it is the pyramids the nile river is the chief of the pyramids because the things to be uh, built the pyramids have been traveled in the barges at the Nile River. So, and the crocodiles, you know, crocodiles, it is believed that the largest species of crocodiles live in this river. So, it is the chief of both pyramids and crocodiles. Well, then the third line, we call the fruit, fruitful and that very while a desert fills our seeing's inward span. Okay, now we call the fruitful fruitful the means you this is archaic language it is old english so fruitful we call you fruitful that means you are fertile well and that very while at the same time a desert fills an inward span now you can see the fruitfulness and desert suggests the barrenness both fruitfulness or fertility and barrenness have been suggested and it has been used to emphasize the importance and significance and fertility of Nile River. So we call the fruitful. So we can take uh, Nile River as a symbol of fertility and prosperity. Well, so Nile River is the spe uh, it is believed to be a fertile thing because it fer uh, it it, fert uh, it fertilizes the land, even the desert. Well, so. You can see at the same time both barrenness and fruitfulness have been compared here. Then in the next line it says nurse of swart nations since the world began. So nursing is you know treating, treating the swart nations. Swart nations means uh, black skinned people. Those are exactly the African tribes or African people, those who lived long ago where the human civilization has begun. So world began means uh, where, the, where and when the human civilization has been begun. So nurse the swat, nurse of swat nation. So you can hear 
see a metaphor nurse of swart nations it is compared to Nile uh, there is a metaphor well so and then art thou so fruitful now there is a rhetorical question from the poet rhetorical question from the poet the question is art thou so fruitful art thou means are you are you so fruitful are you this much fertile now the poet was telling how fruitful and fertile nile river was and now he is asking the question oh dost thou beguile oh do you does thou means do you beguile that means do you deceive deceive or cheat such men to honor thee thee means again you right so the question is you are are you fruitful are you really fruitful or are you trying to deceive us the people honor thee so with the word honor the poet has given holistic quality holistic quality to the Nile River who worn with toil that means the working class people who are working hard working people so rest for space twist Cairo and decan so you can see here um, this is the last question of him in uh, of the poet from the octave from the first eight line so you can see here how it goes rest for a space twist twist means between Cairo and Deccan so these, these are the two places that the Nile River flows between so it started began from uh, the place called Deccan and ends with Cairo well so then the poet is questioning now from the first one two three four five five lines he is telling that Nile River is quite a significant thing because it helps it is the son of moon mountains and chief and also a nurse and it is a symbol of uh, fertility and prosperity and in the next line he is asking a question are you really fruitful or you are deceiving us uh, the people who are working hard that means uh, the people who are working hard want to have a fertile land so he is having a question and rest for a space you are only going for a space which is uh, in between Cairo and Deccan so are you just going through these two places or you are treating us in a fruitful manner well so the next one is next line next from the next line it is the cested starts so first eight lines from the octave and the cested start from the next line well oh may dark fancies uh, they surely do so you can just go through this word dark fancies so it is something that John Keats always do so he is always uh, uh, so fancies means imaginations you know imaginations John Keats always get lost in the imagination of nature so he is having dark fancies which are not realistic so it is he is like daydreaming always in the nightingale or to nightingale also we can see his quality of uh, getting lost in the beauty of nature 
so it's like criticizing oh, oh you are a dark fancy oh uh, you are just an uh, dream you are just a dream are you just a dream so here the, in this aspect the writer tries to give you the realistic image of the uh, Nile river without exaggerating the powers of uh, nature so from this line onwards the poet tries to give you uh, explore the river explore the river in an aesthetic and artistic point of wave well so this is what happens in the sestet explores the the writer explores the river in a aesthetic and artistic way well so well then uh, they surely do tis ignorance tis your ignorance your ignorance that makes a barren waste of all beyond itself so this is another thing that the poet says your ignorance if you are going in a wrong direc direction if you are going in a astray astray means a wrong direction so if you are going in a wrong direction it will make a barren land your astray if you are leading to the astray uh, then you will make the people in trouble make the people uh, suffer so this may also uh, refer to the sufferings that john keats has constantly enduring so much of pain uh, sometimes it may refers to this ignorance and dark fancies to his own problems and his own sufferings due to his disease well then uh, the poet is also again telling the importance of uh, nile river because uh, importance and significance of nile river because if Nile River ignored to provide its fertility for these barren lands, uh, they will be in a great trouble. Well, then the poet says, of all beyond itself, thou dost bid you. Do you, you do, that is inversion, right? You do is there. We have to make the question, you do. Bid you means make wet. Green rushes like our rivers. And dost taste the pleasant sunrise. Green isles has thou too. Well, now we'll see. Do you, get, do you make wet the green lands like our rivers? Like the other, like the other rivers, do you... Uh, make wet the lands and again it is asking and dost taste do taste pleasant sunrise green isles so green isles refers to islands has thou too and to to the sea as happily dost haste and you are going to the sea haste moving hurriedly well so here the poet is asking you can see the word green has been uh, repeated to show that uh, Nile River is fertilizing, making the lands green. So, again the poet is asking the questions, do you make wet the islands, green islands? That means green rushes. 
green rushes means this is the uh, this is the job do you make these lands green that means cultivation this refers to cultivation actually so do you cultivate the lands making them green like the other rivers our rivers right so uh, john kids not jo john kids do not belongs to the african country so he is asking like our rivers do you do this do you make help the cultivation and does taste pleasant sunrise so do you give something uh, do you having uh, do you giving some kind of aid or help to the sunrise as well and green eyes islands has thou too do you have green islands that means do you again he is asking repeating the green he is asking do you help these green help the islands to become green the land to become fertile have you too have you done this too the have you right so and to the sea as happily dost is and doing all these things making the land fertile making the barren lands fertile making the deserts fruitful are you happily going towards moving hurriedly towards sea so this is a, a kind of a question asking from the river after doing all these things making the uh, lands green you are going towards the uh, sea so this is a very nice poem because it addressed to nile river so let me summarize the poem now so this is a petrarchan uh, uh, sonnet it's written in the petrarchan sonnet form so and uh, the river has been personified and given uh, due reverences honor right due reverences and uh, in the opening line you can see son of old moon mountain so moon mountains so that also gives you a kind of uh, reverence to the river and uh, it is believed that uh, it has been started from old moon mountains and then uh, in the second line uh, we feel that it refers to the egyptians because pyramids and crocodiles belong to egypt stories so uh, it shows that uh, the nile river has uh, greatly helped in building the pyramids and uh, it is believed that the great, uh, larger species uh, of the crocodiles live in nile river so the poet calls nile river as the chief of pyramids and crocodiles well then uh, the poet is questioning asking rhetorical questions whether you are fruitful and at the same time uh, correlating the barren barrenness and the fertility the poet symbolizes that nile river is a symbol of prosperity and fertility then he is telling that nile river is also a nurse of swart nations making a metaphor there and since the world began since the civilizations began uh, nile river is serving to the nations all the nations not only the swart nations so then he is asking are you really fruitful or do you deceive in the men, men who is uh, depending on you honor the who are depending on you uh, and who are working hard or do you just flow through these two places cairo and dikan and then he is asking oh you are a dark fancy like uh, you are, are you a dream and uh, telling that you are ignorance if you are going in a astray if you are going in a wrong direction you will make the lands barren barren waste will be left over if you are not serving this island so then he, you he is asking again do you make the green the islands green that means making them the are you helping the cultivation and making the islands fruitful and then 
happily going through going to the uh, going to your destination the sea is the destination of the river destination of the uh, river so are you after doing all these things are you happily going to the going to your destination in a quick manner so i think you have understood the poem uh, though there are so much of uh, unfamiliar words for you it is a really simple poem because it's addressed to the nile river and the poet tries to tell the service of uh, as the themes of the poem the poet tries to tell the service of nile river to the nations and the power of nature because you can see nile river represents nature and nature can at the same time have these two effects being fruitful being fruitful and also being a desert so that is a kind of a power of nature right so nature is a really powerful and mesmerizing so there are also some other sub themes so these two are the most important themes uh, uh, addressing to nile river and giving due respect to it and making a realistic image of the nile river the poet tries to uh, tell the importance an important service done by nile river to the nations and the power of nature well i think you have understood the poem and i would be coming up next with another poem so until then until then thank you all for watching